you say you've lived your life, you had lived your life doing things you weren't supposed to do without consequences, and you had driven under the influence just like she has, and, and then the worst happened. At what point did this hit home with you? At what point was this the wake-up call you had to have? Well, unfortunately, it was when someone else paid the ultimate price for my decision because that was my flawed mindset. I really had convinced myself that because I could drive when I was sober, I was a good driver, um, that if I had a couple drinks, I would know when to say when. Um, but that, and that, that maybe at some point I might get this wake up call of getting pulled over and then I would make this life change. Well, that, that never came for me. It was a simple accident, DUI manslaughter times two. And you know what, ironically, I was driving a Jeep too. And I didn't hit a guardrail. I hit the rear end of a car with two 20 year old girls in it. We were going, I was going about 48 to 50 miles an hour. Does that sound familiar? And their car was pushed into the median where they hit the only tree that could have taken their lives and that's exactly what happened. And you can see the picture and the carnage of what happens. And you know, I was raised in a family like yours where I had all the support that I needed. I just rejected it because of pride. And like Dr. Phil said, because of arrogance. You know, we gotta get over ourselves. And that's what I really hope you'll do. And recovery is a one day at a time thing, not a 35 days, four times. I tried, they kicked me out. AA will not kick you out. You can go any day of the week more than once. And if that's what you need to do, that is what you need to do, not for you, but for the innocent people like Megan and Lisa and these families that you're hearing about that wreak the damage of the, of the choices that we make. And I know your mom, I've seen her on the video, they have taught you right from wrong. And now it's your turn to step up and stop thinking about self and start thinking about other people. Thank you. Thank you. And I will tell you this, it'll be a life worth living at that point. Because once I got over myself, and I had to do 11 years in prison, and that was only by the grace of God. But now, on this side of prison, I'm actually proud of the life I'm living. And you know, you might think there's no hope right now, but that's because you're looking at the wrong things. You're looking at what is going wrong in your life. You're looking at all of your problems. If you would just make a choice to not make it a problem, not only would you be doing a service to your parents, but to yourself, but society as a whole. And you know what? That'll be something that you can look in the mirror and be proud of yourself for. And that's where your hope's gonna come from. It's 11 years. You're sentenced to 22. And it's only it's from the grace of God and, and, the, and the power of forgiveness from this gracious mother who petitioned the court to let him serve those concurrently instead of consecutively. And that's why they're here today because they decided to create value out of this and work together to stop this happening in the future. And they were willing to come here today to talk to you, to talk to you. And you have to decide that you're worth that. That these people cared enough to come here to talk to you, that you're worthy of being here, you're worthy of them doing what they're doing, and then you've got to live to that. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.